In experiment two, we're going to be separating organic compounds from a mixture. You guys already, last lab, learned how to do a filtration, which is a way to separate a solid and a liquid in a mixture. Uh, but in this uh, video, we're going to be learning how to use a separatory funnel, which is a way to separate immiscible liquids. Uh, if you uh, go on to the lecture on the PowerPoint, you'll see a slide that looks like this. This will give you step-by-step -step instructions, but hopefully this video will give you a good feel of how it works. So, let's get started. So as I said, we're separating two immiscible liquids. Um, oftentimes, one of those liquids, the organic layer, may be from a reaction that you've just done. So here we've got an organic layer that has dichloromethane, CH2Cl2, and then we have an aqueous layer, H2O. So in our organic layer is uh, an organic product. But there also may be some aqueous byproducts or other materials that we could extract away from that organic layer into the aqueous water layer. So that's the idea behind the separatory funnel. We want things to go between the organic layer and the aqueous layer so ultimately we can get our organic product um, maybe more pure than it was to start with in that organic layer. So let's get started on using the separatory funnel. So we're going to start using the separatory funnel, uh, which means we've got to add both of our immiscible liquids into the funnel itself. So we've got always our organic layer, which in this case is dichloromethane, which also contains an organic product. We also have our water layer. So now we've got two immiscible layers inside this separatory funnel. You can see clearly a line between those two layers uh, in the separatory funnel. So which is on top, which is on bottom, you've got to know the densities of your two liquids. In our case, dichloromethane is denser than water, so it's down at the bottom. And then the water sits up on top. If you're ever uh, in question, then you can add a little bit more water to see which layer it goes to. So I didn't, if I didn't know which layer water was, if I had a little bit more water, I can see which layer gets bigger. And in this case, we would have seen that the top layer got bigger, which means water is less dense than dichloromethane. One thing that you always need to do before adding any liquid is ensure the stopcock is closed. Uh, many times, me, other people have left this thing open and then as you're starting to add stuff, it all spills out on your bench below. So make sure you seal that stopcock before doing anything else. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start doing our extraction. We've got our two layers inside uh, the separatory funnel. Before we added it, we made sure that our stopcock was closed so that nothing spilled out the bottom. And then first thing we need to do start the extraction process is firmly place the cap on top. So at this point you want to make sure this is firmly sealed and then turn the separatory funnel over and open up the stopcock. You might have heard that a little bit of gas just released. Uh, that gas releasing process is called venting. So what we're going to do is shake up our separatory funnel little bit by little bit and then vent it. So every time we do that we build up a little bit of pressure inside the sep funnel. We open it up and vent it. So by shaking it harder and harder we eventually are going to give a chance for all that organic and aqueous layer to interact with each other to um, let this separation take place. So we keep shaking it a little bit harder every time we vent and then we're going to keep doing this until we eventually don't see any more bubbles coming out. So at that point everything inside your mixture should have gotten uh, ample chance to mix with each other and then if we turn that back over we can still see we've got two distinct layers, a bottom layer and a top layer. Notice the interface right here. If you shake this too hard, you're going to create something called an emulsion, uh, which 
would be pretty relatable because that's like salad dressing. So if you shake too hard, it's going to mix up uh, so well that it's going to be really tough to separate out. So make sure that you don't mix so hard that you create this um, mess of aqueous and organic layers. So once we've separated our two layers, now we need to get the bottom layer, which in this case is the organic layer, out. So the bottom layer always goes out the stopcock at the bottom. So bottom layer out the bottom, and then the top layer, which is water in this point, is going to get poured out of the top. Alright, so now we're going to separate our two layers. We've got a new beaker down beneath, and then we've got our organic bottom layer, aqueous top layer. So by uh, opening up the stopcock, we're going to release that bottom layer. See how I've got uh, the step funnel and a ring stand. So you can notice that bottom layer dropping further and further, the interface line. So as it gets close to the bottom, you want to stop it and just kind of let it go drip by drip until you've totally reached the bottom. At that point, you want to take another clean beaker and then take the top layer or the aqueous layer and pour that into the other beaker. Since this is your first extraction, it definitely takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Hopefully it goes smooth and you'll be better at it when it comes to doing some actual organic reactions. So good luck and experiment too.